welcome to another episode of the Fashion Grunge Podcast. I am Lauren, your host. And I'm Joy. Hi. Hey, what's <laughs> up? We're doing Wild at Heart from 1990 by David Lynch. I'm really excited because this is a new avenue for me. I know of him vaguely, uh, David Lynch, so not completely. So I'm really excited to get into this full entire thing that I actually really enjoyed. I'm so happy. So yeah, I'm I'm so stoked. And now I'm just like, wow, so many people that I like are super inspired by this guy. <laughs> Cause so the, many, yeah. yeah like, and now I can see some of the things that I'm sure he was inspired by too, especially like that movie Paris, Texas. Oh, yeah. Like that cinematographer, I think it's Robbie Mueller. Like I'm sure his cinematographer also. Like they had a lot of similar kind of vibes. Within yeah. that, natural born killers. Natural born, yeah, exactly. Like after that, like you Tarantino, see, like yeah, so much, so much. I mean, yeah, for sure, Tarantino, but yeah, like natural born killers. I'm like, okay, that's just like taking that story to the next level, like this story to the next level. But it's like a road trip. It's like pretty similar, like yeah, it is. Road, you know, like it's yeah, totally. Then it has yeah. a heist, like you know, like a bad heist, like a Tarantino film where there's like this one weird thing that goes on yeah totally. time jumping loads of flashbacks yeah like natural born killers that's that they do that and that a lot no i think yeah i think david lynch is like the sickest like american director he seems not like, american he I, I know i would definitely think he's from somewhere else. i know he doesn't yeah he, i know what you mean like he's he's really weird too because his style and everything is not really it's more european but, yeah, I, but I it, would think it is. Yeah, but I think he's I, actually. I'm pretty sure I read that bef- like somewhere before that he's always been influenced by European artists and directors more than Americans. I think he named only two American directors, but he loves like Alfred Hitchcock and like oh, Kubrick. Yeah. Kubrick and like another one is like he only likes or mentioned like two American directors, but the rest was like, um, what's the other one? Oh my God. Where's Kubrick from? He's American. He's, he's American. Like, yeah. He's from New York. Oh, I thought he was English for some. I know. I know. I know. And it's because he moved to the, to, he moved to England. Oh, okay. He Maybe produced that's... a lot of his stuff from there, but I'm, um, what's, What's that really? Oh, Roman Roman Polanski is European. Oh yeah, he's Polish. He, he right? loves he loves Roman Polanski. Yeah, I still have to see Chinatown. That's that's on my list to oh, watch. It's so good. Yeah, I actually we watched it recently. Like oh cool yeah I think it's somewhere I saw it somewhere on some streaming thing and I was like oh I need to add this I need to watch this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Well, I my okay, I'll I'll start with my first impression because I just saw this. Yeah, uh, it was super hard to find. So. Um, yeah, I, it's on DVD. I'm sure, but I'll, it's kind of like a weird thing though, because it's like David Lynch is kind of like culty. So I feel like it if is, you yeah. know him, you probably know this movie because you've probably seen a lot of his work. So, but yeah, it's not streaming, unfortunately. That's the only yeah. Thank you for it. finding it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to find it. It's not. It's hard to rent. Like it's crazy. So you you can buy it. It's it's barely cheap. I think on Amazon, isn't it? To rent to buy. Um, I you really want it. But yeah, approach. check it out. <laughs> Um, I know that Nicolas Cage is a massive Elvis fan in real life. I don't know if that is because of this movie or if he just incorporated his real life love into this. Um, because I found out that he incorporated his real life jacket, which I thought yeah, was cool. I know. So, so I'm wondering if his Elvis obsession was like he told David Lynch about it. I, I don't know. I, I couldn't find that out. Um, I just said I loved. I love a good road movie. Anyway. I just love movies on the road. Uh, there's just something about them. Probably because you just move areas in the story, yeah. too, which I like, where they don't stay in one place. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I appreciate the weirdness. I like it. I like weird stuff. Um, it definitely has a noir vibe, too. It does, yeah. Um, which I thought was really cool. Like, the framing's cool. Like, the camera work. It's really weird because the last one we did was 12 Monkeys. So these are these two, like, completely crazy director really intense <laughs> yeah, yeah. have these definite weird like intense in different ways but um yeah but i think david david lynch has like an element of like horror too oh yeah totally. it's not scary like slasher horror you know but like definitely yeah. willem dafoe is terrifying oh my god horrifying he's way he's in his teeth he's and like oh, he's so gross and i was like god i usually find willem dafoe like weirdly attractive 
but like not in that. <laughs> no, <laughs> this at all. No. I was no. like, oh. I think he's a weird attractive. I think he looks super hot in American Psycho. I like him in that movie just because I like the way him and Bale play off each other. But um, I know. Yeah, he, I think he's weird so looking. Weird. I like it though. I like his teeth. They're weird. I know he. He's really interesting. I think it's more about like his personality. There's something about him, but yeah, he's not he he's not like attractive. Like I don't think. No, no, he's not like uh, I don't think. Uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, like, like generally attractive. Like that everybody likes. Like he's not like mm-hmm. Brad Pitt, where it's like everybody likes him. You know, he has something weird about him that I like. That that is cool, really cool. But this one, he was definitely really terrifying. We already talked about Tarantino, and then yeah, the Paris, Texas film, which is also one we should probably review. Oh yeah, I it also has Harry film. Dean Stanton in it, who's in this too. It's such a good film. Yeah, just the cinematography alone, just like really amazing to watch. I know. And what yeah. do you think about seeing? David Patrick Kelly. Do you know that? Oh, one? yeah, the guy. That's I was going to say, the last thing we did was the Warriors. I know. <laughs> so I was like, oh, wow. I was like, this is like full circle. I feel like that was so long ago, by the way. I know, because I haven't really done one with that. you in a while. Yeah, I was going to say, we haven't done one since, well, obviously the New Year's. This is the second one of the New Year's. Yeah, so. it's just been like weird. Um, fucking shit show. We're not even a week in. We- a week into the fucking new year and literally like the world is on the brink of like i don't even know well the world in america is more like it's like it's even more of a the u.s is just crazy a, a mess and <laughs> yeah yesterday was like was nuts so i mean i don't fucking know man i just hope shit evens out whatever i know i have to say i've never experienced that level of like not never, but not in a while. Like, it, it felt really dark. Like, you're trying to run back yeah. home because you felt frightened, you know? Yeah, we were talking... This is the day after. I mean, this is going to come out, like, a bit later, but uh, as the day we're recording, this is the day after this, like, insurrection at the fucking Capitol yesterday. And for so anyone who's that's what listening... We're, in the U.S., that's what we're could, talking about. For anyone who's in Europe or in another country um those people that you saw on tv are not washingtonians they no. they're not they don't live here they're not from here they yeah, are we're here in the city so we yeah, they, got a brunt of this insanity yesterday yeah so um i just want to make sure people don't think that we're savage oh yeah because that no. is not they're not even from here they actually no. came from like so many other Maybe states. Like, yeah, I and I saw them. I saw these cars everywhere. Like they were trying to find parking and um, there's this one really funny video I have to send to you. Like, I mean, this is not a political podcast, but like, you know, screw you if you fucking support this guy. But oh yeah, like um, there's this one woman and she's like, they guess they tear gas him or whatever, and like this guy is like carrying her. She's probably like 20s or something. And she, she's coming down, the reporter is like, ma'am, ma'am, like, what's going on? Like, what happened? And she's like, oh, my God, they tear gassed us. Oh, my God. It's, like, screaming. And they're like, what are you doing, though? Like, what were you trying to do? Exactly. She's like, she's like we were trying to get in the Capitol. And he's like, why? Yeah. And she's like, it's a revolution, man. Oh, <laughs> God. Like, oh, my God. These fucking people are crazy. I know. Like, you, this is insane. You know what the saddest moment was for me yesterday that I actually experienced? I was, like going to work and it was really it was 11 a.m completely this like the streets were dead there was like no one yeah. and I see this guy walking alongside M Street carrying an American flag like a massive one yeah like and then big. he rolled him he wrapped himself around the flag and kept walking and I just find that so sad it was like it's like how do you think you're any more American than anyone else but I feel like you know the American flag now is lost yeah it's lost like a general proud like yeah. proud it's now I just see an American flag. flag like it should be exactly I see an American flag and I'm like okay they're, they're Trump supporters basically yeah you know but um, like why should it be like that like anybody should be able to fly the flag of your fucking country exactly. like you know what I mean like it's just crazy and hopefully this shit will just get taken care of soon who knows yeah so however I, i'm so glad that i rewatched this movie the day before because yeah i watched it last was, night i was like how can i concentrate on this but it was good i know though. how can you concentrate yeah exactly <laughs> it was good though oh well, so what are your first thoughts like have you seen you say you saw this before a long time ago right i i watched this uh, a really long time ago like because i didn't over really, 10 years no like more like honestly a really long time ago like it's possible I watched this when I was in my first year at uni. 
Oh wow! Okay. I was like, didn't yeah, we were say so it. young when this came out. <laughs> we I mean, like, yeah, we were like, no way we could have seen it. And um, but I remember, I I really didn't remember much of it. And then when I rewatched it, I was like, oh yeah, I remember this scene. I remember some bits now. Um, oh cool. But yeah, I mean, I I really like this film. It's you know, it's like what you said, like a really cool like road trip love story this amazing fashion mm-hmm. and i love love a southern accent like oh yeah <laughs> i just I, I try really hard to to imitate it, but i can't but it's i'll, I'll be practicing actually because i just really want to do it it's really like so many uh english people do the southern accent so well which is really funny really well, like I'm... the one accent that i think english people can <laughs> do really well the one that they kind of flub a bit is uh, cumberbatch i would say is good he got that boston one pretty good in black mass which is a hard uh, accent. Yeah. um i'm trying to think of other but like a lot of the american a lot of american accents i hate i have to, to say one of the worst i've ever heard is your boy killian it's oh, pretty- oh, come on. Yeah, him and Tom Hardy have not so great accents. And I think what the yeah. thing is, well, yeah, the, I think what the thing is, is that which a lot of people make the mistake of when they're from other countries is they hit the R's too hard. And Americans oh, don't hit yeah. R's that hard. And when they do it, like they kind of make it a little bit more aggressive. Oh, you know? Talk- I yeah, know we you don't mean. talk like that. Well, <laughs> that's true and i've heard it in multiple films it has it doesn't have anything to do with like the region of the character like when i always hear tom hardy's also their voices go up high octaves too yeah because it wouldn't sound the same it's almost like you have to yeah it's it's weird you have to change the way you you speak completely yeah the tone to to do like a different accent like i when i try to do my american accent which is really funny i go like oh my god like oh yeah you go higher please you know like it's really silly but yeah you go higher up yeah you do and you do roll the r because we think that americans roll the r a lot <laughs> so yeah it's, uh, it's cool but there are obviously a lot of people who can do both i mean yeah. obviously they they get really well cool. i also to be fair in killing's defense he has made most of the stuff he's done he hasn't made many like american movies no like, no i've seen did, like one or two he was in bat no. was he in batman yeah mm-hmm. yeah he was in batman but um so yeah inception was he no was he in inception what's the no. movie he was in with nolan not the batman is another one isn't there another one no i can't remember i don't know a party but, was an inception I think Killian Murphy was in Inception, wasn't he? No? I really don't think so. Oh, okay. I thought he was. I know no, Hardy no. is. I, I mean, I think I will remember he was in that movie. <laughs> he, is, he does. Like, he, I think he does a good Birmingham accent, but I am not one to judge. But Oh, is, yeah. No, no. Is that a does, good Birmingham accent? He does a really good Birmingham accent. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. Going back to this. I... Uh, Oh yeah, that you want to have you like southern. Yeah, accent. I love I love that. Also, I I really love the fact that they shot in in uh, well, they in New Orleans for a mm-hmm. bit. Like I I love it. I love it. I love that place so much. And it's really cool to see it in the nineties. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. But yeah, I mean, I think this is pretty much like David Lynch. Like he loves violence. Like he's kind of obsessed with like ugliness as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like kind of the characters well his characters but also like the aesthetics like there's always kind of that contrast of like cool and and then really run down kind of grimy like Mm -hmm. you know um and And color yeah color in a really cool way yeah of course yeah um and conceptual but i I really like the references to the wizard of Oz as well (laughs) I know that was one of the lines that I wrote down. I, I already know. know what I'm naming the episode. Oh, excellent! Yeah, I'll tell you when we get there. Okay, yeah. Like, um, so yeah, I mean, I just, I, re- I, I just, I quite laughed actually quite a bit watching it because some parts are just really funny and some lines are like insane. Yeah, you know? they're really funny. Yeah, like how he calls her peanut, and they're just really mm-hmm. cute. <laughs> They are really cool. I also love that I love his uh, his speech about his jacket as like a testament to like, his personal freedom. When people ask him all the time, like, I don't know. It's like this jacket. What is wait? Um, this jacket. This is a snake skin jacket and a symbol of my individuality, my belief in personal freedom. 
<laughs> so funny. I think it's. I think that's what the description for Elvis's blue suede shoes are. That's like that's the the meaning of that song is like don't step on my individuality. Oh yeah. I wonder if that like ties into his like he's a massive Elvis fan. Like Nicolas Cage, I think has like the most amount of Elvis memorabilia than anyone. No, I, I in the world. That. Yeah. So like yeah. I'm wondering if like all these things are just more of his personality and like a part of what he really likes because he's like nuts about Elvis. I know, because he, he can, you can really see in his, um, like, the styling as well. Like, his hair and the whole, like, jeans with a white T-shirt. Like, mm-hmm. he looks pretty fine, actually, in this movie. Except, I love Nicolas Cage. I think he's, like, a wild card. So he's he a is, weird, but I'm just but so like... disappointed with, like, the films that he's done. Um, yeah, lately. Like, so many crappy ones, you know. I feel like... He could have been a really great. I didn't know that he, he won, won an Oscar. An Oscar. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I've never seen that. Me either. I saved it on my TV because it came on TV like two years ago, and I I still haven't watched it. Yeah, I so, have to watch it. I, my friend said it's good. Uh, yeah. So okay. So this is me talking about um, this movie yesterday with Matthew. And um, Matthew's like, he said an Oscar. He's won an Oscar. I'm like, it was has he? And we then she told have. me, yeah, I know her. I know she's done. I mean, she's a really great actress. But mm-hmm. Matthew's like, it's a really good movie. That one, like Vegas, whatever. Yeah, um, leaving Las Vegas. I want to watch it. It looks good. Yeah, and Holly Hunter, I think, right? Isn't she the girl? No, it's that um, something shoe. Elizabeth. Oh, shoe. the shoe. That's right. Okay, they look kind of similar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. I like her. She's in this really good Iraqi film, Mysterious Skin. Yeah, I like her. She just hasn't done a lot. Even well, anyway. Um, Wasn't she in like some TV show? And then she was. Did you know twice? What was she in? No, no, she wasn't. No, I don't think she was in Melrose. I think she was. In, was she Baywatch for like a second? I see. I'm looking it up now. Uh, okay, Karate Kid, Back to the Future, Soap Dead. She's in in Boys, the Boys right now. What's that? It's that oh, show that I told you. Right? Yeah, yeah. The show uh, about superheroes, right? Is that yeah, it? um, yeah, bad superheroes, but yeah. Oh, bad ones. Yeah. No, she's not in any. No, she's not in any '90s show. She's just in movies. Okay. Call the glory, but that's in the '80s. I don't know what that is. Yeah, but, she yeah. was with Tom Cruise in that film, right? What? She was in Cocktail. I think she was in Cocktail. Oh, was she in her. Cocktail? Oh, let me see. So, for let's talk about behind the scenes. Okay. So what I, my first note I have is the budget of this was ten million dollars, mm-hmm. kind of like pretty healthy for nineteen ninety. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, made fourteen point six in North America, so I don't know if it opened worldwide or anything, but it made more of its money, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean it didn't make a lot, I don't think, but still, it's um. He won. He won. Um, the Palm Door. Yeah, I know. It's so cool. It is really cool. Even though it was Boo at Cannes, so really, yeah. Why? But, but then a lot of a lot of um, I think most of the, his films have been Boo at Cannes for some reason. <laughs> oh wow! He's not like a popular, <laughs> like popular guy with the rest of the community, I guess. Yeah, to do. Apparently, um, people walked out the the screening in like the early screenings of the film. Like he he said, that, like, pardon. Can you imagine, like, walking out? I know <laughs> all the stuff we have that comes out now, like that people walk out that people could walk out for, and like I feel like nothing in that film was like walk outable. I know. What well, I know. Not well, a. Compared to what we have now, I guess. Maybe back well, then. Maybe back then. Talk I think it, Well, yeah, I can imagine it being like quite shocking and kind of like people didn't get it and maybe felt a bit repulsed by it. I mean, some scenes are like intense, you know? Yeah, well, that is true. Yeah, there are a few yeah. scenes that I'm like, oh, this is kind of, yeah. Like when he know. smashes that guy's head and like. Yeah, in the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty intense. Like I love those people. I love like Laura Dern scream. She's so dramatic. It's so I know. <laughs> I love his name is Sailor. Sailor. His name. It's so funny. It's really funny. Um, what else do you have? 
Um, okay, uh, Laura Dern and Nicolas Cage took a weekend trip to Vegas yeah. before filming to bond as characters. So she was like this kind of weird, like Marilyn Monroe, but like not like with like you know different kind of quirks and stuff. And then he was kind of like this Elvis, like masculine type dude. But they wanted to like make their characters one, so they went to Vegas. Very good idea. I, I think so. <laughs> I think it's such a cool. Um... I guess I don't know, not exercise, but su- such a cool thing to do, like to get into character and to speak yeah. like, with your, you know, because it you make sense because they had like a really good chemistry throughout the whole film, and it has to be believable. Exactly. You know, yeah. I would think these are like a Bonnie and Clyde. Totally. Just, just like um, I don't know if we found that out in our Natural Born Killers rewatch, but I feel like they had good chemistry too, Woody Harrelson mm. and Juliette Lewis. So I wonder if they did something similar. They did, yeah. They, but the thing is, um, in this one, they do have, I mean, so, like, some sexual scenes are like, some of those sex scenes are a bit like, whoa, you know? So <laughs> you can't... films are really cool though. <laughs> no, they are, they are. But still, like, it must be so hard to, to, to show that. I mean, it's I not though. Like, How did you know? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I like two people that I met in LA were actors. They'd been in like you know several like indie films and stuff. And I was like, "What's the hardest thing?" And they're like, "The sex scenes are the hardest things to do because they're so awkward because there's like twenty fucking people there. Like people no, don't. They, they're like, it's weird. And also, what if it's someone that you like you're acting with, but like maybe you just don't, you know, you don't really want to do this or like it mm. just like especially for the women, it's basically men on those sets." You know, like yeah. there's no women, but now they have like intimacy coordinators and like technical advisors. Like now it's like choreographed more, but yeah. I think back in the day it was like very awkward because so the awkward. sex scenes weren't regulated. They were very no. much kind of like whatever the director no. wanted to do. You know, it wasn't like because remember I told you earlier, or maybe I mentioned in a podcast that woman that was on the affair, mm-hmm. Ruth Wilson, she actually left because she wasn't treated with any respect in regards to the sex scenes in that oh, really? TV show. And it's run by a woman. It was, it was show run by a woman and created by a woman. And she was like very, um, you know, like she came out, I think a year after the show ended and said like, yeah, this, we didn't know why she left at first. I was mm-hmm. like, Oh, why'd she leave? They only have one more season left. And yeah, we come to find out like she had a lot of like unnecessary scenes. A lot of them were like very, like violent ish and they Mm. didn't make sense with the story. And she was like, I feel like no one was standing up for me and no one was kind of, which is crazy to think now a woman run production and another female actress would run into that. But I can imagine in the eighties, it was like, whatever, you know, like whatever you want to do. But I, I did read that Laura Dern changed her, uh, like her rule. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't didn't want to do nudity, but she was like, he, like made me feel comfortable with it. I didn't feel exploited or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, no, she was great. I mean, yeah, I think that's such a hard cool. thing to do. Well, but I mean, equally is hard for a man because how do you not get hardened? How do you not get hardened? Honestly, I think so, you do. How can you not? I it's mean, so awkward. Oh god, you have to, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just so it's so weird. I would never get used to that if I was an actor. But no. I guess it's very like clinical. You know, it's not like actually what like having sex with someone is like with no one else in the room i mean it's very Mm -hmm. you because it comes across like there's no one in the room but i mean it when you pan out and you see like Mm -hmm. 40 people and like some lighting guy like (laughs) (laughs) like i forgot what interview was with some actor she was like it's not hot at all there's like some sweaty man with like a big Mm -hmm. audio boom like right like maybe right outside of the camera like people staring at you like i was like yeah that's true well I mean, yeah, it was pretty cool. And um, yeah, it's uh, Nicolas Cage does um, his own singing. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. I was very impressed cool. by that. I was like, oh, he's not bad, you know? No, he's not. And I also was going to say, it seems that Elvis is a big uh, theme for a Party. lot of people because in True Romance, uh, Christian yeah. Slater's character is like very <laughs> obsessed with Elvis. Yeah, I mean, he influenced so many people. Like, he was like, for a long time, the. Yeah, like the top guy, the top, right? Yeah, I suppose. The well, main, I mean, I guess, pop, rock and roll, pop singer. Well, I guess, a, like, the first, yeah, white guy. Because In the Chuck 50s. Berry, Chuck Berry was, like... Oh, yeah, but I he mean, was never as big as Elvis. Hmm. Or, like, Jerry Lee Lewis, or, like, those yeah, guys. Yeah, exactly. they were obviously bigger. Um, I already mentioned that he, this, he used his real jacket 
Yeah, which is yeah, so which cool. is so cool that he wanted to do it, and Lynch incorporated it into the story. I'm like, he had a jacket. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and he it's... gave it to Laura Dern after the movie. Yeah, I saw that. It's yeah, really I wonder cool. if she has it. I know. It's so cool. Um, and then I have that it was filmed in August of '89 in LA, some in the San Fernando Valley, where they are at the end when she's driving. Is that like? Um, that's where that... I used to work in LA. Oh, it's, really? It's like yeah, it's like near the Ten Freeway. It's like they're all like warehouses and stuff. It looks cool. It's not. Oh, <laughs> okay. I mean, it's not. It, there's no one down there, and and at like four p.m. it becomes like a ghost town because most mm. of the factories are open at like six. Oh, okay. They work yeah. from like six to three. So when I used to get off work, sometimes at like five in the winter time or like four in the summertime, mm. there would still be no one out there. And like this guy from my office would like walk me to my car because there's no one out there. Like it's just completely desolate. Wow. Um. So yeah, but that area, I was like, there are never these many cars here. <laughs> like when she was in the traffic jam at the end. Yeah. But um. But yeah, it was cool. I was like, oh, I know where that is. Yeah, it's really cool that um. That he was meant to direct it only, but then he read a script, and then it was like he liked the story. Well, you know, he, I don't think he read script. I don't like those script, but he read story and then rewrote, like rewrote it basically. Yeah, um, it's a book, right? Yeah, it's a book. But he changed the ending, and obviously he he added his own twists to it. But um, he did it like I can't really remember. I want to say a week, but oh wow, I think it was a week where he like basically rewrote the whole thing and they seem really happy with it like you know oh wow that's cool yeah it's really cool um yeah so these came out you said what what month of august uh no it was filmed in august of 89 it came out in august of 90 yeah because the show uh can on i think it was may and then okay he was filming Twin Peaks at the same time in '89. Yeah, he had to step away, came right? out in April 1990. So, oh, yeah, he was. I think he was filming. He was filming the last. No, he was filming the first episode of Twin Peaks when he took this project. So, oh, wow. I guess they both. Maybe that influenced Twin Peaks a little bit. I don't know what influenced what. Like, um, you know. Oh, but, which one came first? Kind of thing. Well, Twin Peaks pilot first, first, right? but then yeah. I guess I don't know. I feel like he was kind of pretty influenced by both, and like you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, I, we people didn't probably hear this because uh, we were talking before off air. I have tried to get into Twin Peaks, but I'm going to try again. So yeah. um, now I'm kind of excited to do it because I I feel like I really liked this, so I know I think more of what I'm going to expect a little bit. So I'm excited to start watching it again. So, yeah. yeah. And I know a lot of people out there are like, oh my god. I can't believe you haven't seen Twin Peaks. Like, I know. Well, now you can join the... Yeah, now I can join the oh, cult. Fine. Maybe we'll end up having like some kind of David Lynch podcast. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe um, I'll be like, oh, my God. I just want to talk about David Lynch. Has, about has that been done before? Like, is it a, a David Lynch on, podcast? On, no, on Twin Peaks. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure if you Google in podcasts, there sure, are... I'm sure, right, several, yeah. Yeah, that... Because there's only two seasons, so it's not like... It would take you that long. No, but it's a lot of episodes. Yeah, but still, it's not like some people do American Horror Story. I mean, there are ten seasons. Oh, of that. Like, really? Puppy, oh, God. No. He's got seven and twenty-five episodes. Like some people do longer shows. So I definitely think someone's probably done all of Twin Peaks by now. Hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's it's so funny. That's so crazy. Yeah, everyone's so obsessed with it. I know, and it's also really cool. I mean, you might not know this because you haven't seen Twin Peaks, but. Um, a lot of the actors from Twin Peaks are in this movie. They make Cheryl like, and Femme is in it, right? She's the girl in yeah. the car accident, right? Yeah, but then all the, the ugh, can't remember her name, and I can't really find her in here because I'm sure she looks really different. But uh, there is, you know, that of that actress that is when they kidnapped the the stepdad, like mm-hmm. um, oh, what's her name? Ah, Lula's stepdad, right? He gets yeah. kidnapped. And there's these, there are two men and this woman who basically looks like Madonna. Like, there are two women, Isabella Rossellini and this other yeah. actress, and they have similar styling, like short blonde hair, very kind of Madonna. Like, yeah, yeah, movies, I wrote that like, Madonna. <laughs> oh, really? Madonna fashion, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, she's it, in uh, Twin Peaks as well. Oh, Grace Zabriskie. 
Is it? Yeah. She has, I don't know. Like right a chair. She's in Seinfeld. She's right, also right. in Big Love. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, she really is um Laura Palmer's mom in Twin Peaks. So Yeah, it's the girl who dies, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah, there are quite a lot of other actors that make appearances from Twin Peaks, so it's really funny. Yeah, and Kyle McLaughlin's in a lot of his films, but he's not in this one. Hello? Kyle McLaughlin, you know? Yeah, no. you know him, right? You actually went for a bit. I didn't hear anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, Kyle McLaughlin, the guy who's the FBI agent. Oh, yeah. In Twin Peaks. He's in a lot of Lynch's films too, right? Um, Let me see. He's in Blue Velvet. I know he's in Blue Velvet, I think. Oh, you mean the main guy? Yeah, yeah, the main guy. Kyle oh, McLaughlin. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's not in this, but... No, he's in Twin Peaks and obviously... And the new one, right? The yeah. The newer one that came out, yeah. It's so annoying because I love that actor so much, but then he was in Sex and the City and I hated his mm-hmm. character there. He's so he's good in Portlandia. Like... Oh, really? <laughs> he's the mayor, yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, he's funny. He's you, he you so have... funny. Okay, when you start watching Twin Peaks, you're so going to like fall in love with his with his character. He's, oh, just, cool. has, he's just the best character. He's like... Mm, I need coffee. He's obsessed with coffee and he's always I like him already. <laughs> yeah, I know, and donuts and like he's just really smart. Uh, he's just so fucking funny. I can't even think yeah, let's not talk about Twin Peaks because it's like another thing, but cool. I mean uh, I'm really excited. Jai was like, you have to let me know as soon as you start watching it. So I yeah, I'll rewatch it with you. It. Yeah, we should do one of those. I've always wanted to do it. Like I want to do it with like me and Jules or like just someone to like hang out with where they have that <laughs> no, they have like Hulu watch party where like you can watch it all at the same time yeah like, yeah, together, yeah and then right. there's like a chat thing on the side i, I really want to try that like yeah. i don't know if netflix does it but i think hulu i've seen it on hulu where they're like try this but it's really cool i guess that people can watch movies together you know since yeah, no, that is really yeah. cool yeah. well i'm hoping that by summer we can hang out in um my, in real life <laughs> yeah we can hang out together watch movies and just catch up with yeah like, totally and like make up for all the again. Make up for make up for the year that we couldn't like do anything. <laughs> yeah, totally. I know. I feel like I'm. I need to like plan lots of road trips. Like I want to travel now. I know. <laughs> like, that's what I want to do. Can I, I come? Other places. <laughs> yeah, man. I want to do like we should do like short road trips. So lots of places we can go in like a day and come back the next um, day. Are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello, Jai. No. Okay, you're you- back. You're back. I lost. How it. weird! That's yeah. so weird that like things are like fading in and out. It is, especially uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. It's probably me. I don't know what's going on. Who knows? Well, wait, let's just move on. So, yeah. um, also David Lynch directed the music video for Chris Isaac's Wicked Game. Yeah, it's like that classic so black and white with is it Helena Christensen? Yeah, Her yeah, name? she's so hot in it. Like, oh, she's she's a helicopter in case anybody hears that buzzing. She was, oh, I could no, there's a, anything. yeah, there's like a helicopter. Flying. Yeah, that song is in the movie pretty much for they just fade out the lyrics, it's yeah, like mm-hmm. playing non stop. Do, do you think it's funny how dramatic it is? Like, certain parts of the film are like really funny because they're so ridiculous. Yeah, I do. Like, I definitely think the heist happen. was really funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's also like very um I don't know, like really eighties like kind of soft opera. Like yeah, yeah like over like the campy. top. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's cool though. It's like really it's really weird, it's really different, but yeah, it's it's cool that it's not describable. I like things that aren't describable, mm-hmm. you know? So like it's one of those things where you just have to watch it and either you like it or you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Either you're gonna get it, or you're just gonna be like. Eh. But I can definitely see why he's not more of a mainstream, mainstream director, like a Tarantino. Yeah. Because I like what I do really like about David Lynch and some other directors, like in the same vein, like Larry Clark and and Rocky and all them. Like he's it's never like, been a sellout. Never. Yeah, like I they know. they only do what they want to do, and and they'll do some stuff that's you know like Greg Rocky. I told you was on Riverdale, but it's still him. You know, he's not changing like the story too much and you can tell in there he pushed to get his vision across same with david lynch like it's cool that i think whatever channel that was it's showtime i think that that did the twin peaks the new one it's cool that they gave him you know license to do 
whatever. Obviously, he's like a huge person now, so they not like they would censor him in any way. But it's cool that they just you know they can use their aesthetic and not have to change it. Yeah, exactly. Not that Tarantino does. I mean, he just has gotten more like just commercial, more commercial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and big actors. You know, like huge actors now. With, like, Leo and Brad and, you know, like, he's gotten, like, A-list, A-list. He like, always has, thing, though. Yeah, no, he has. But Tarantino is more like he's just a direct, like, he's just a film director. Like, I feel like David Lynch is an artist, you know, across, like, so many different platforms. Like, he m- that makes music and... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's, he's multidisciplinary. A, he's so <laughs> fucking talented. He trained as a fucking painter, you know? Oh, wow. I, actually, he lived briefly in Alexandria, well, in Virginia. He, oh. He, he studied in D.C. briefly at the... I, I'm not going to pronounce it right because I can't really remember what it's called, but... Corcoran? Cor- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he oh, went there. Cool. And, not there anymore. No, I know. Yeah, they like got rid of it. That. One of my friends went. Yeah, so it was. He lived really everywhere. Good... He's lived in so many places, and then he didn't like it here, so he moved to Philly, and actually, he went to uni there. He studied there, like oh, okay. painting. But I mean, cool. yeah, he's like on another level, like artist, you know. And he's from like Montana. I know. So that's, like, a very weird. Yeah, like, I can imagine if you grow up in a place like that, and you have access to like films and things outside of your local area you just become you know it, yeah. it's so different you know than growing up in a city and oh, yeah. easily having access to all this different you know well he lived in a really rough area in philly i can't remember what it's called fairmount for i don't know oh I, but, I don't know philly that well well he said that he's been really like that's the place that's inspiring him the most oh, or inspired wow. his work because it was truly like da- like a dangerous time where where he lived like when he was there and oh, okay. um, there was like crime, a lot of crime, a lot of shooting, like his house got broken into like three times. Like yeah. it was like, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's like, I guess the place that's inspired him the most. Crazy. Yeah. Um, do you have any other notes for behind the scenes? Um, not really. I have the same, the same as you really. I have one more uh, last note that in the, as far as the theme, David Lynch described it as finding love in hell. Oh yeah. That's nice. Another, I like that. Yeah. That's another good one. All right. So fashion, give it to me. Oh, it's too much. I can't even, I don't know where to start. Like you see so many like Marilyn Monroe references. Mm-hmm. Madonna for sure. I mean. Yeah, I wrote Isabella Rossellini. So Madonna. She, and the other lady as well. Mm-hmm. And then obviously Elvis. And I love, I'm obsessed with like Isabella Rossellini's lipstick. It's that pink, mm-hmm. like matte. It's so cool. Like, I, I wish I could get it. It's like, super 80s. Really 80s, yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, that's literally like Madonna in 89. Oh, um, yeah, totally. But then it's really funny, too, because the mom, um, Laura Dern's mom. Oh, yeah, like, Diane Le- Ladd. Yeah, which is funny because it's her mom in real yeah, life. Yeah, her real right? mom, yeah. She, she looks 70s. Like, her whole look is really, like, 70s to me. Yeah, she does look like kind of Valley of the Dolls, like, a house yeah. coat, 70s, yeah, her yeah. Her hair yeah. And, the, and her dresses, like, her outfits and stuff. But then, for me, like, it's um, Lula's outfits are the, the best. They're just oh, so yeah. wild. So like, the fact that she basically wears fucking, up, like, lingerie. You know, she wears, like, underwear, like, then parts of the whole thing. Like, she wears that, like, really cute lace set, with the red shoes. That's mm-hmm, like yeah, cool. I have that one now. And then she has that, um, she's wearing tights. Like those like. The tights that have like the designs on them. Yeah, like really Raquel. 80s. I'm pretty sure she's wearing a thong because you can see like everything. And she's wearing like little corset. I, no, she's wearing that leather bra. That's oh yeah, the triangle. The triangle. The triangle. Yeah, and she's like a necklace on. Out. Looks really cool. Like, she looks incredible. Like, yeah, she does. Wearing those she's outfits. really tall too. She's really tall. Yeah, she's yeah really in real really life. Like yeah, she's really tall. She must be like 5'10 or something. And then I love her outfit at the end in like the polka dot. The polka dot, yes. I know, I love it. She's is it a so romper? Cool. It's like, are they shorts or is it I a dress? Know. I don't know if we saw the bottom of her. Um, it looks like a dress, but at the time they were also like, because I have a couple of myself, like they were like basically play suits. So they're yeah, like, a romper, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, yeah, we call them rompers. Yeah, we call it play suits. <laughs> play suit. <laughs> it sounds like a little kid. Like a little kid that have a play suit on. <laughs> um, yeah, I, and I mean, Nicolas Cage looks pretty cool, too. I have to say, he looked really hot until he gets in bed with Lula and he's wearing that awful, like, those awful, like, pants. The ones that have like the there's one that have like stripe on the no, side. Not pants, sorry, I'm calling like underwear, you know. Oh, where he takes his pants off and they're like, yeah, like he's like wearing, a weird, like not it's some, not a thong it, though, it looks but it's like it, a fucking speedo, but like underwear. Yeah, it does. It has like the, it has like a high slit. It's, it's like really what girls weird. wear. Yeah, it's, it's like what girls would wear, like a high that's, okay. Let me tell you, that's that what weird. That's what uh, men in Europe wore in like the eighties and nineties, like if, mm-hmm. and Brazil and like France and Italy, like that kind of like speedo, like yeah, weird, like, I can see that, yeah. Oh. That was not pretty. I, I it was awful. I don't know why he had to wear that. But. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of shocking too. And I when he was <laughs> uh, like taking his pants off and getting into bed, I was like, well, he's wearing those. I like, know. Why? That's <laughs> so weird. I know. Really weird. It's like. I don't wear those. I've yeah. seen those in like Queer as Folk. <laughs> like, that's like what I see them in that show. Like, a lot yeah, of those guys just, wear them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, fashion is incredible. I love it. What, what about what about you? Um, I love, uh, especially when she wears a lot of pink. Like, mm-hmm. in the beginning, she has that pink on. She has that pink. I think it's a pink dress. She has pink on twice. Yeah, she wears a pink dress. So yeah, pink. yeah. Is, yeah. which is so 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 cool um i do love the the lace tights and everything like i just think that's so cool she also has madonna stuff too she does yeah, yeah. she when, has that when madonna they vibe to, um they go to that metal yeah concert, which is in like my favorite that's my favorite scene when I'm yeah that's one of mine too like how they're dancing like nico's cake i know dance. slam dancing man like, what yeah, that's real. It's, it's really, real. It's you really guys, oh, did they not slam dance in England? Not like that? Not like that. That's oh, like, no, that is slam dancing. That's what you do at metal shows. I know, but it look, I, I've never seen that. Oh, I totally have. I mean, I mean not, not like all of it, but, but when they were outside uh, of the car, for sure, that's slam dancing. Well, because they, with, I don't know, I feel like they look kind of out of place in their outfits and then they're dead. Oh, yeah, no, that, yeah, totally. <laughs> that, yeah. Car, it's like you wouldn't wear like a fucking snake skin jacket to a metal show. Oh, no, probably not, but who the mm, fuck knows? I feel like Axel Rose. Yeah. Do I still it's, think I know he's like an enemy of Nirvana purists, but I still think he has the best wardrobe of the fucking nineties as far as as far as front men go. Who? Axel Rose. Oh, Axel Rose. Yeah, oh, yeah. He yeah. has the best. Uh, I mean, I love grunge. We all know, but as far as a stage outfit, like all the grunge guys could be like going to the store after their shoots, well, after so, their yeah. their things. But like uh, Axel's is just like stage. Like he knows how to put on a show. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also like I mean, I don't think any anyone did what he did without like, those no. wore, like, white lycra shorts. Mm-hmm. It's just like such a weird, bizarre thing to wear. I you know? want to talk to him about his fashion choices. I really want to know, like, because it's it's such a perfect mix of like taking what they did in the eighties, like mm-hmm. Van Halen and totally. like all yeah. the spandex and like Molly Crew and like fucking crazy, but still like incorporated elements of like grunge, kind of like old beat up blazer, like high top sneakers that were all roughed up. Like they weren't costumey. He didn't have makeup no, on. I know. It's yeah, so it was like this mix of both. It was so cool. The feather jacket. The day when like oh at least they didn't have stylists. They were just Oh like, yeah, he just grabbed shit. So cool. <laughs> yeah. There's one really funny, um, really funny uh, performance that he had where he has like the sparkly blue uh, like bandana on. And apparently mm-hmm. in the green room, he wouldn't go out until he got a bandana and they gave him a red one, like the regular red one. And he was like, I don't want that. And they were like, what are we going to do? He's like, I, I'm not going on until I find my perfect bandana. Oh my <laughs> the manager was like, what the fuck? So the manager like looks out in the crowd and then Axel looks at some guy in the front and was like his. I want that guy's, and that's that guy gave, and that's the one he's wearing. Like, and it's one of the big 
shows. It was like in the late eighties. It was like oh, at the wow. red, and that's the one he's wearing because he like refused to go out until he got this like audience fans <laughs> like bandana. I was like, that's so cool. That's and I'm like, funny. oh my god, Axel fucking took it. Um, yeah, that's about all I have. It was basically a lot of the same. Oh, I also really love the fringe jacket on Bobby Peru. I was gonna say, <laughs> I do love a fringe jacket. I do love the contrast in that fits when they get to Texas and the men are wearing very like kind of cowboyish like outfit. Mm-hmm. like the sh- what is that called you know it's like a weird thing that you wear like like a collar oh the bolero tie yeah yeah, yeah. dude uh, i i drove through texas when i drove to california it's like that <laughs> it's like that too? yeah texas is cool yeah 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 i mean not everyone but there yeah there are people who are wearing like that old school western mm-hmm. you know like vibe like boots hat bolo That's ties cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it's really cool yeah i like texas texas was cool i really like it a lot of people are leaving la and moving there i know they have yeah. no no uh state tax i know i have a friend who's um in la and he's moving to texas and wants to settle down there like buy a house yeah, yeah you can get like a ranch probably for like way cheaper than you oh, can wow. anywhere in, uh anywhere in california that's for sure oh cool yeah so you can get like big land and you know you can have guns and stuff so if that's your that's, if that's your thing then you know yeah i could never live there just because i'm afraid of guns i don't want to live anywhere where i see them like that <laughs> Yeah, but I guess it's like it's so weird because if you have a big ranch, I guess you probably do have them because mm. you know who the fuck knows animals and if you have horses and cattle, like you know, I guess you just have them. Yeah. But just in a regular house, you know, where like you know you're just living in regular suburb, like there's no need. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would think there's no need, but whatever. When people choose differently. Um. Oh yeah. So music. Do you have any music tabs? No, really. I mean, I like the music. It's just funny. It's like literally that song that's played um, throughout the film at different times. And I think David Lynch did make some music for the film, but I'm not yeah. sure about what tracks or what, you know. Like some of the instrumental bits or something? Yeah. I think the music is just very dramatic. It's, it's funny. Like, I don't yeah. think I, there isn't really anything that stands out besides that, that song. Um Oh, I have a few notes. What, what uh, the metal club dancing. I did like that. Um, the blues singer in the club. I oh, that yeah. Was That's cool. cool. That song is really cool, yeah. Um, and obviously Chris Isaac, Wicked Game. The night. I like that it's playing when they're like riding at night in the car. Yeah. I just like, like where it was, like that it was at night. I thought that was really cool. And then I love the Love Me Tender at the end when he's singing Elvis. And she's, at first yeah. she was like, why don't you do Love Me Tender? And then when he does at the end, it's Love Me Tender. <laughs> I was like, oh. Those songs are, I think, the best. I, yeah. Yeah, they're super good. Yeah. They're really cool. It's just All like. All right. A- oh, I can't wait. Um, for what are your favorite scenes and lines? Well, do you have any more music notes? No, 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 no music notes. Um, yeah. I mean, I already mentioned that when they go to the metal club and yeah. had everything from the moment they get there because they're dancing. Then he, um, that guy is kind of like making fun of his jacket, mm-hmm. and then things it's just too funny it's just yeah, it's really um so cool. I, like I that, one. that line obviously and i like my other second like favorite scene is um when they get to texas the first night mm-hmm. and how they're hanging out with these like cowboys i don't mean i don't know how to call them and then i think it's i can't remember the order i think there are like three really big ladies dancing like mm-hmm. kind of like topless in a like, really funny weird clothes like bottoms and like they're wearing color i can't really remember oh and yeah, they, yeah. Um, that, um, that yeah whole sequence because they're like they're just acting really weird these yeah. men are just acting really weird saying weird shit then the three women appear dancing and stuff and they're like it's kind of shocking at the time i think for yeah, no, like, to see three big naked ladies like that like yeah that's true and then william defoe appears and and then that guy is lighting up a cigarette and it looks like a magic trick yeah i wrote every time anyone lights up the cigarette i love that you see the match like catch on fire yeah yeah, yeah. that's really cool like it's I every like time that. which reminds me of requiem for a dream 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that I'm sure Darren Aronofsky, I'm sure, is inspired by Lynch. But when they have all those like fast cuts when they do the drugs, yeah, uh, yeah, that reminded me when he did the match, and you saw it multiple times throughout the film. You saw the exact same sequence, which I I thought was really cool too. Yeah, no, it is really. Um, I like that sequence a lot. It's just, I think I like the the weirdness of it. Yeah. They're just acting like nothing's going on. I mean, I think Laura Dern's face is a bit like, what the fuck? Yeah. But Nicolas Cage is just like, whatever. He's very know? aloof, like, throughout the whole thing. He's very yeah. just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. What, what, um, sh- sh- okay. I don't think. Do you have any lines specifically? Oh, there's so many, but like. I have a few I wrote down. Mine are really long. Well, there's this one where, um, I think it's just really weird like lula says to to sailor you remind me of my daddy you know mm-hmm. mama told me he likes skinny women with breasts that stood up and say hello <laughs> how awkward it's just so weird like so weird. God, that's the last thing you want to say to your partner you remind me of my dad like i know unless ooh. you have a super fucked up dad or she was sleeping with that guy when she was like 13 some family. Yeah, friend. she did not look thirteen in that scene, by the way. But... No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> I was like, okay, they're no, definitely not. Oh, that's so crazy. Um, I mean, there's so many. You go. You. you okay, go so my first favorite scene was that dancing at the metal club, uh, mm-hmm. dancing in the fight there. Um, one of my other, my other, one of my other favorite lines is, "You haven't let me down yet, sailor," which is more than I can say for the rest of the world. Um, I like that. And then the line that I'm naming the episode is, you got me hotter than Georgia Asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. I love that. It's so um, And I, I just have like little notes. Like I wrote the psycho mom flashbacks being crazy. I just think oh, it's so God. funny. But she's like all painted up and like, um, like lipstick or whatever. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? This bitch is crazy. But I like how they keep flashing back. And like her boyfriend, like Harry Dean Stanton is just like, uh, or not boyfriend guy she's sleeping with whatever i was like <laughs> he's just like you're crazy no i haven't found them and she's like what she's just screaming and like, <laughs> like being so crazy all the time yeah do you think the cuts are kind of odd they, yeah yeah some of them are definitely kind of odd all than random it's like no it's just a weird like change of um scenes and cuts but i mean it's is that it him gone, like but... i hope it's not the copy that i got I mean, it's like all fucked up I don't know. But no, no, I'm probably buy this DVD most likely, so I'll yeah. watch it again <laughs> and check it out. Um, the slam dancing um, in the desert, uh, like on the side of the road, is one of my favorite scenes too. Where they like pull over and they're like changing the music because they like hear on the radio that they're like out and they're looking for them, and she's like, "Oh, change the radio!" And then they put that metal on and then they dance like outside. Oh yeah, I think yeah. that's really cool. That cool. Um, and then I wrote, "Ha ha ha, big tuna town." I thought that was kind of funny. Um, I love the sequence of the dad like burning on fire, running through the house. Yeah, yeah, I thought that looked really cool. It just looked really cool. Um, And then I like uh, another quote is that kind of money could take us all the way down the yellow brick road. I like that. Oh yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, there are so many. That's what I mean. There's and then like the Glinda the Good Witch after he's knocked out. When he sees Glenda the Good Witch, and he's like, she's like, why are you running away from love? Oh my god, that's funny. That's really like, loves you. Too bizarre to see that witch there. It's like, I mean, yeah, it was like, yeah, definite Wizard of Oz like oh, happening yeah. here. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. And then I just love uh, my last uh, favorite scene is when they break up at the end when he meets his son and everything and then that scene is just so powerful when she's like you can just see how like upset she is that he's like it doesn't matter like the kid hasn't known me for that long anyway so it's like, no, Taylor, no no and then i was like oh my god he's leaving her i was like this is crazy and then all these like chain of events happen and then i love when he's like running back to her and and then he like you know loves her yeah. and they sing love me tender i know i, I was know. like oh yay i was like happy ending i didn't expect a happy ending though i have to say i was expecting some shit show i know well the original story had didn't have that ending but he didn't want that and so he changed it and everyone was like no like you kind of like they didn't think it, it was a good idea but i'm glad that he he did because fuck it it's yeah. like a really crazy film so like i like the fact that there was a happy ending you know yeah, it's unexpected. I definitely thought it was going to be some crazy shit and then just ends. You know, like, oh, like what? You know, like you don't know anything and you don't know what happened. Yeah. 
something I totally forgot to mention is like I think the guys in that kind of like at the end where he gets beat up by those men the gang. They, yeah they look really cool they look like the warriors <laughs> i know they're so fucking stylish like especially a couple of them are like whoa do you look like you just step out of a fucking fa- for fashion shoot yeah you know? they totally do i also have to say a good addendum i sent you this on youtube but i'm just letting anyone else know macaulay culkin does a great review of the warriors Really? Um, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, I sent it to you. I, I got I texted you a while ago. I'll send it to you again. But he does a really good um, it's some some podcast where this guy does reviews or it's a YouTube channel or whatever, and he sits down and breaks down the Warriors. It's really cool. I love Macaulay Culkin. I think he's so weird and and funny and cool. Um, I can't wait to see him in the new horror story because oh, that's like oh. yes, I'm blowing my fucking mind. Like well, he hasn't been in anything, has he? Not for a while. Mm-hmm. After Party Monster, like what I don't did think he do? so. I can't remember. I mean, I and that know. guy died. Did you ever see Party Monster? I did. Yeah, the guy who he played in Party Monster just died like the other day. Of what? A heroin overdose. Oh god. But like, dude, I mean, not that like you know whatever. But like, he killed his fucking roommate, or not roommate, drug dealer. Like that's what he went to jail for. Well, like, yeah, I have no sympathy for you. Like, yeah, like what the fuck, dude? Like, like the fact that he got out a few years ago and was just like milling around. I was like, he murdered someone. How is he milling I'm around? Sure he just couldn't cope. Wait, yeah, I'm, like, with I'm like, how are you milling around town? Like, what? So weird. Yeah, but um, I haven't seen Macaulay in a lot of stuff, but he's been around. Like, he does interviews and stuff, but oh. I haven't seen him acting lately. So I'm excited mm-hmm. for this Murphy thing because Murphy is a fucking weirdo, and I love it. So, uh, and I've definitely seen Ryan Murphy um, inspired by David Lynch too. I think he's mentioned it. I mean, okay. so I'm just late on yeah. the train. I get it, people. I have a lot of research and work to do <laughs> and watch <laughs> Twin Peaks and now see David Lynch and all these other things that I watch. But it's also really life. cool because you're watching it for the first time, like, I don't know, like in 2020. Like, yeah, it is cool. No, mm-hmm. it's not. It's t- 2021. I forget. <laughs> Oh god! Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it'd be really cool to hear your perspective on it, you know? Because yeah, it's yeah. I'm excited. Um, you know what I love as well? I love all the scenes where they're like smoking in bed, like yeah. Bed. It's cool. like I don't think you can say that's '90s because it, I mean they were doing that in the '70s, but I do love that they're smoke like they smoke like Marlboro Reds and mm-hmm. that's a um, smoke. Same. That's my the first cigarette that I. I mean, I basically when I started smoking, that's all I smoke. And then I was really young, so uh, yeah, when I was lights first. I remember being seventeen and be told in the UK like, "What's wrong with you? Why are you smoking Marble Red? That's what like truck drivers smoke." Yeah, same. They're like, I know. I was like, I always, I always remember this so clearly, like being told by older men, like, what's wrong with you? Why are you smoking that? Like, it's so bizarre. You know? You're not smoking like a feminine long cigarette. That's all. Yeah. But then eventually, I mean, I used to get sick a lot because yeah. I like, on the weekends I would smoke like on a Saturday, like 30 cigarettes. Yeah. I was bad. It was horrible. And I used to get like sore throat all the time and cough and like cold. So mm-hmm. I switched to Marlboro. Uh, no, what are they called? Menthols. <laughs> Oh no! I smoked menthols, I think, for a little bit, but yeah. Then, no, was there was another red. one. There was like one that I really liked, camels, just like like yeah. like ones. Camels smoked for a long time too. I used to smoke um, American Spirits. I don't know if you have well, guys. I don't know, no, yeah. Like that, no. Um, and then there's another one. Uh, oh, Black and Mild, it's like those clove cigarettes. Did you guys have mm. those? They're like black. So. Yeah, they're they're really harsh. But no. someone in my high school used to smoke them, and in my high school, oddly enough, like we could smoke even though we weren't allowed to, but like you just couldn't be uh, a mile within the school, but you could be like down the street and smoking the teachers would see and not tell your parents. Oh, wow. So, and even on field trips, we could smoke like in front of the teachers. So we were, everyone's underage. No one's, I mean, a few people are 18, but not very many, but it was really weird. So then, uh, so yeah, I started smoking in high school, like pretty easily. And there was a guy near the Silver Spring Metro who would sell to us. God, I started yeah, was, smoking at 14, so... Yeah, I was like 15, something like oh, that. Gosh. I mean, my dad, really you know, my dad smoked with me. He was like, I know you smoke anyway, so whatever. But yeah, my um, parents didn't... I don't think my dad still really knows. Let's hope he doesn't listen to the David Lynch episode. Oh, but, oh. But, um, but my mom knew when I was like older, but she's like, I figured. I, one time I burned a hole in my comforter in my room. I and, know, same. Yeah, I was, I she, yeah right. she was like, what is this? I never really smoked weed in my... 
in my house. I think I was always like outside, like when I was in high school and stuff. I never smoked weed in my house. But um, yeah, it was really weird. Yeah, yeah. it's just really funny how they they they're smoking throughout the film like a lot. And I know. I think she said she got kind of nauseous at one point because she smoked yeah, like she four cigarettes. She yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, like, so that means they're real. They're not like the herbal ones they have now. No, I don't think so. I think back in the day, like people smoke was different now. Oh, like, like fucking uh, Killian Murphy on Peaky Blinders. He was like, holy shit, of course I'm not smoking real cigarettes. I would like die because he's always smoking. All time, yeah, all the time. I think they're herbal or something. But, um, oh, yeah, I had the perfect explanation of yesterday's events on Twitter. It was definitely a mix of Mr. Robot, Black Mirror, and House of Cards. All I fucking <laughs> oh want. Oh, that is true. I tweeted that yesterday. I was like, this is, at first I was like, this is Black Mirror and Mr. Robot. And then I was like, no, wait, and now it's House of Cards. Because okay, that's totally, <laughs> that's like, exactly what, what exactly. happened yesterday. <laughs> And also kind of a David Lynch film when there was someone wearing like some weird horns or oh some shit. God. I was like, what the fuck what is going he on? Wearing? What the fuck is he wearing? I was like, like what's going on? What is happening? Some kind of like fancy dress party going bad. Is like, this a movie that like we just don't know about? Is this like a huge like just parody? Like, I mean, come on. You know what's really <laughs> strange? Like yesterday when I was on my way home, I saw this woman and, and her partner on 14th Street, right? And they were like, obviously... Trump supporters and they were wearing the hat and like Voldemort they, they had like a the 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 red hat with like a pompon like a wool wool one right oh, okay. and then I watched I saw her on TV like what home, like much later yeah she was in 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 there she was outside the oh my god capital. I was like god oh, it's so weird gross people so, fucking get over it fucking whatever it's so crazy but. Yep, well, speaking of craziness, we've wrapped that all up into a nice little David Lynch episode for everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, yeah, this this trip down uh, crazy lane and... We'll, we'll we're probably going to review another one soon because yes gonna... please like we got to do David Lynch like um more of these films and we'll do Paris Texas too yeah Even though it's eighty four but it's a great film and I think a lot of people have probably seen it if they I haven't think, yeah it's a cool classic yeah that's on HBO I think I think I saw it somewhere so that one's out that one you can actually get so yeah. yeah. That's really cool. As always, like and subscribe. <laughs> um, I keep forgetting to say at the top of the show, but that's okay. I mean, like and subscribe. Uh, write us a review. I like to read them. They're fun. <laughs> um, we have a few up there, so let's get some more. And uh, yeah, well, we don't know what we're going to do next. We'll um, yeah. Oh, yeah. also, I was going to say this reminded me, some of the scenes reminded me of my own private Idaho. I know. Yeah, that Very much so that vibe, the- too. Like the um when they're on the road trip and like mm-hmm. yeah, I know what you mean. It was very yeah, similar, like, it's, it's cool. like I love a yeah. road movie. Love a road movie. Can we talk just for one second how awful like Willem Dafoe's teeth? I know like, movie. They're so gross. His teeth are like weird in real life. Like they're really spaced. Like really everywhere. Big. Face, yeah and that I think adds to his characters that he plays mm-hmm. for sure. Like if he changed his teeth he would not look the same. I, I, I think agree. Kirsten Dunn said they wanted her to change her teeth, and she was like, no, because she has those, like, jagged teeth that stick out. But when she was playing, like yeah, I like them. Yeah, but it will totally okay. change her smile and everything if she changes that. Like, you wouldn't think it would, but if you saw her with, like, straight teeth, you'd be like, oh, yeah, she does look different. I thought she had a straight teeth. What do you mean? No, she has one that's kind of, like, slanted. Oh, and she yeah. smiles, yeah. you can see it. Yeah, it's not a big yeah. deal, but it adds to, like, Dude, her, yeah, you know? Exactly. It's her. And I think she she mentioned like people wanted to change my teeth, and I was like, no, yeah. <laughs> like why would I, you know? No, I know. Well, I mean, it's funny because yeah, I mean, in America, it's really rare to see people with bad teeth, especially like actors or like musicians. Oh yeah. But in the UK, everyone has fucked up teeth. Yeah, I was gonna say like, that's like the the ongoing thing from like Austin Powers and stuff, right? It's really not people. I mean, you drink so much tea that it, it's oh, your it's the tea. Tea. Going to be yellow no matter what and also you drink a lot of wine so like oh yeah and also people don't floss oh so yeah but i was gonna I'm say because i know people from england and they have fine teeth they floss and brush their teeth like normal well i mean i'm yeah of course some, some people but it's not like most people like in the not in most, america yeah. it's like most you know people. it's yeah 
And it's common for like, you know, all this shit we have here. Fucking the dental aisle is like massive. Mm-hmm. All those mouthwashes and picks and all that shit. Ugh, the yeah, also dentists in the UK are really not great, I have to say. Oh, yeah, they're, they're not. So, you, a lot of people go to like, if you can afford it, you go to like a private one, which is like really expensive, right? Well, I think it's just high because you, you're... They're high anyway. You used to like get everything for free. So like having to pay is kind of like a bummer. So people don't. And oh, that's yeah, why yeah, I was going to say. Use like would. NHS dentists and they're awful. They're bad. Oh, no. It's not good, yeah. That sucks. Anyway, on that um, on that downer, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll sign off for this episode, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, see you. Bye. Bye.